Hello friends, in previous videos for DC circuits, we have described different concepts of the chapter as well as we discussed Kirchhoff's laws and some of the thumb rules which make the application of Kirchhoff's laws in different problems very easy. And in this video, we will be solving a couple of questions in which we will use those thumb rules as well as Kirchhoff's laws of KVL and KCL. So, let's do some. So this is the question which we have in our hand that okay the we can see that there are multiple cells in it and multiple resistances in it. So we'll define some of the steps which we'll be following again and again in different questions which we encounter. So the first thing I would suggest is to name the corners. So let's say I define that this is A. B, C, D, E, F. So this is one good practice which will like eliminate the kind of mistakes which you can do because you will always be taking your circuit not as a not as a whole but but in different segments and different branches between different two letters. The second thing would be to identify. The non overlapping loops and like there will be n numbers of it. So we can clearly see that the loop A, B, E, F is A, B, E, F is one such loop, and the second such loop is B, C, D, E. So we know that the number of non-overlapping loops is 2. So this number helps us identify that we can clearly like, get two equations from two loops of the circuit and the two equations which we will which we'll get will be through KVL and we will be using this property of KVL. KVL. That is why we are quite interested in finding out the number of non overlapping loops because we will be applying kvl separately in one of in these two loops one by one and we'll use this formula to find out the different variables which we'll be introducing the circuit the third is to identify the variables so we know that the resistances are given, the voltages are given, the only thing we need to introduce are the currents. So let us name them. So just start from any branch of the circuit. So let us say I am I am starting from branch FA. So I can say that okay, I am putting variable X as the current flowing through branch FA. Because it is a single branch, the same current X will be going through F to A and similarly because there is not there it's not a junction because one current is going and only one is coming out. So only X will be flowing through flowing through A B till point B. Now point B is a junction and I know that point B because it's a junction I need to apply the KCL or Kirchhoff's current law also known as Kirchhoff's junction law. And what it says is the num the net current coming in is equal to the net current going out from the junction. So let us say if the current X is coming in and there are two branches which are going or separating out from point B. 
So let us assume another variable y which defines the current flowing from point B to C. Now from junction law I can do two things. Either I can name the, sec the, th the current in the third branch as Z or Z and now I can apply the junction law which is like net current coming in to B which is X equal to net current going out which is Y plus Z and this defines Z to be X minus Y. So I can either do this or I can just directly write it as X minus Y and we'll be solving the KVL directly in only X and Y and will not introduce Z because we have already eliminated Z from our equation using the junction's law equation. So from B to C we have Y, same current will be flowing from C to D, Y. And similarly because it's a continuous current without any branch in between. Similarly X minus Y will be flowing up to E. E is another junction. Now we can check that the net current coming into E is X minus Y plus Y. And the net current going out should be X and that is what the case because we identified X. So now we have like done three steps, we have, we have named the corners, we have identified the non-overlapping loops, we have identified the variables and we have used the KCL to help identifying those variables. Now let us apply KVL one by one in both the loops. So the fourth point is apply KVL one by one. So let us take loop one. So this was loop one, this was loop two. So the loop one is A, B, E, F. So the one important thing in applying KVL is the direction in which we will be moving while applying KVL. So we need to define the starting point to move and the direction. So in this case, like VA is equal to zero, we can either start from F, A, B, or E in this loop. So let us start from point F. So we'll say that VFF F equal to zero. And the second thing is that we'll be moving in clockwise direction. So let us define one single set, okay, clockwise. So we'll be doing clockwise motion in whenever we'll intend to apply K wheel in our circuit or in our loop. So let's start from F. So we are moving from F to A, to B, to E, to then back to F. So let us apply KVL one by one in each of the branches. So F to A will move. So we are moving in the direction of the current and we encounter resistance of 3 ohm. So just re recall the thumb rules which we earlier discussed in another video in which we told specifically that when we are moving in the direction of the current and we encounter a resistor, then there is a voltage drop of IR. That means when we are moving in this direction, the I means X and R means 3. So it's 3X, minus 3X. So there is a drop. Then we are moving ahead and we are encountering the negative edge of a voltage. And this is covered in the second set of thumb rules in which whenever a battery is or a cell is front of us and we are encountering the negative edge, that means a gain of E. And similarly, when we encounter the positive end of the battery, it means a drop of E. So that means negative edge, so it means a drop of a uh, gain of six. So up to A, nothing else is there. From A to B, we have nothing apart from a zero resistance wire. So no voltage drop or gain has been introduced. Then from B to E, we are moving and we encounter the negative edge of the battery. So it means again, a gain of potential 10. Now we are moving again in the direction of the current and encounter a resistance of 2 ohms. But this time the current is changed to X minus Y. So there will be minus X minus Y into 2. And we come to E and from E to F there is no potential drop or gain. So now it is equal to 0. So this gives us our first equation which is minus 5X plus 2Y plus 16 equal to 0. This is our equation 1. Now let us see our second loop which is B, C, D, E. B, C, D, E. And we are starting from point, uh, let's say we are starting from point C. 
so v c c equal to zero, and again we'll do a clockwise rotation in this as well. So we are starting from point C. So we are moving ahead. First of all, we encounter the positive edge of the battery. That means a minus fifteen. We are moving in the direction of the current and encounter two ohms. So it means minus two y. From D, we reach up to D. From D to E, nothing is there. From E to B, we encounter two ohms, but this time we are moving in the direction opposite to the current. So that means we'll gain I R. This means two into x minus y, which is the current flowing in this branch. Now going ahead, we encounter the positive end of the battery. So this means minus ten. We reach up to B, and from B to C, nothing else is there. This means equal to zero. And this will give us two x minus two y minus two x minus four y minus twenty five equal to zero. So this is our second equation. So we have got two equations and two variables x and y. So we it can be easily solved, and we can find out x and y. And once we have found x and y, we literally know everything about this circuit now. So we can be asked to find out the potential difference between A and B, between C and D. So there can be a there can be further parts to this question that we are we want to find A, B, or C, D. In that case, we will apply the general form of Kirchhoff's voltage law, which we knew was V A B. Is V B minus A, and it is going from A to B. So let's say if we are asked to find the potential difference between V A F. So let's say we are asked to find V A F. So it means that we have to go from A to F. So let let us go. So we will be using the same thing which we applied in this in this loop, but we are only concerned with the first branch. So we are only concerned with branch A. AF. So we are moving from A to F. So A to F, we are moving. We are opposite to the direction of the current, but we are first encounter the battery, the positive end. So it means six volts, and we are moving in the direction opposite to the current. We encounter three ohms, and it's like positive three x. So this this will be it. So once we have found x from these two equations, we can just put into it, and we can find out the voltage difference between A and F. And similarly, if we Are asked to find V F A, we can do the similar way, and it will be just negative of this. Similarly, we can find potential difference or current in any branch of the circuit using the K V L and K C L. Now let us do one more question. So okay, one thing which I would like to just stress upon is that the question comes that okay, why non-overlapping loops? so what will happen if let's say uh, instead of doing the kvl in these two i am using a c d and f the bigger loop the loop which is overlapping or like which is overlapping with both of them so let us find out with a c d f so our starting point will be a so v a is 0 and it will be a clockwise movement so from a to c nothing is there from c to d first of all a minus 15 then minus 2y from d to f nothing is there from f to a first of all it's minus 3x then plus 6 equal to 0 so you can see that if i add equation 1 and 2 like minus 5x plus 2x give me minus 3x plus 2y minus 4y will give me minus 2y and plus 16 And minus twenty five, twenty five will give me minus nine. So effectively, this this third equation is sum of equation one and two. So the third equation is not giving me any new equation, and therefore is redundant. So that is why we identified in our second step that we only concerned with the non-overlapping loops. and the number of equations or number of variables which we will be introducing is equal to the number of non overlapping loops what we can do is that instead of considering these two loops we can consider one loop which is inside it and the second loop which is this 
So if we would have taken equation one and three, that will serve our, our purpose. If we are taking equation one and two, that is surely good. And equation two and three is good as well. So we can like consider any two loops, but it is safe to always go with non-overlapping loops so that because they are easy to identify and you you don't have to go to a bigger length in the circuit. So I think it will it's quite clear that how to solve a problem and I can just summarize what we did is that the first of all we have to name all the corners so that we can identify the different branches in the circuit. We have to identify the non-overlapping loops and the number of non-overlapping loops will determine the number of equations and number of variables which we'll be introducing. Then we'll go and find out the number of variables. KCL will play an important role in finding out the number of variables because it will eliminate some of the variables and will reduce the number of total variables equal to the number of non-overlapping loops. What we can do is that we can like name the third variable as Z and then find out using KCL so that it will be eliminated there and then and there itself. Then the next step we'll be applying KVL in each of the non-overlapping loops one by one and we will use the specific case of KVL in which we are concerned that the net potential difference in a loop or in a closed loop will be zero. We'll apply this with a starting point and a direction of motion and what that's what we did in both the non-overlapping loops out here and each of them will give us an equation. Now we can solve them simultaneously and we'll find out the value of the variables which we introduced. Now after getting the variables value, we know that we can solve each and every point on the circuit with respect to the current and the voltage difference. And that's what we explained here that okay, we can find out potential difference between any two given points in the circuit. And in the end, the main thing is to do is that what is the importance of non-overlapping loop because the overarching loop which encompasses all the loops gives us no extra equation or important equation. Thank you.